finally. Boy, this is a great show we got here. Um, when it comes to spirituality, uh, this is a big part of my life. This is a big part of my brand um, because it has been my journey over since 2011. Um, August 25th, 2011, I remember the date perfectly. I went through a spiritual awakening. My whole entire life changed in an instant. Um, some people call it the veil. Some people call it um, God's glasses. But this happened to me. I experienced this. Um, and when it happened to me, uh, uh, I, I didn't know what was going on. I was seeing funny numbers on the clock. I was seeing... Uh, divine manifestations of God, for instance, um, I'll see, listen to God on a uh, license plate that drives right by me. Um, j just stuff like that. And it was blowing my mind. And this was back in 2011 before people were really on this uh, consciousness or they like to call it new age wave or whatever. Um, so I, the, the only thing I knew to do was to type in, um, why am I seeing funny numbers on the clock on Google? And when I did that spiritual awakening came, came up and I jumped down a rabbit hole and figured out what was going on to me, going on with me. Um, when you, when you talk about stuff, the stuff to people that have never experienced a, sp a spiritual awakening, you know, um, it's really words don't do it justice. Um, I, I, and I don't want to get on here and, and get too preachy, but you know, um, in the Bible, there are people that experienced like these crazy experiences, um, that are unexplainable. And I've been to church. I used to go to church all the time. There was no pastor that could really tell me what was going on. I really had to go within and I really had to search to figure out who I am and what was going on. So when I come across you guys, it lit, it lit a, like a spark in me. Um, we've done about 24 shows now. And this one has the most significance to my life. I'd like to commend you guys for what you were doing. Um, it's brave. Um, the, 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 the trailer from what I saw is very enlightening. And, and you know, it's, you guys have an incredible movement. Because there are so many people out here that are going through this. They just don't have the answers. And um, I just want to give you guys flowers right off the bat. So the first question I ask all of our all of our guests, I usually ask, "How did you get into film? You know, like, you know, what 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 piqued your interest?" But for this interview, I want you to describe to everybody how your spiritual awakening came about. And how you became aware of the spiritual world and what it means to you. And then we could dive into, you know, the film side of things. Um, nice. Thank you, Jenny. Should I go first? Sure. Yeah. Great. Thank you. By the way, um, thank you so much for sharing um, your experience, because I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. A lot of people who have been through the journey. Uh, I certainly have and I think yeah it's definitely not an easy one especially when you're in it by yourself and there's no one around you that can kind of tell you what's really going on so I commend you for coming out on the other side <laughs> it definitely takes a lot of guts and and will willpower to do that so yeah well done to you um, but my journey well so how I came about this whole world uh, because I really wasn't spiritual it kind of all started about eight years ago for me and um really it was a 
quick way and I basically had someone in my family who passed away um, and that was obviously kind of just crushed my whole world. Every belief that I had about life and about why I'm here, it kind of just went down the drain, you know? So I started asking myself a lot of questions like why we're we here, what happens to our loved ones after they pass away? Can we still communicate with them? Do they still exist? So all these questions that I've never really had the need to ask myself, I was all of a sudden kind of, you know, questioning and wondering what happens. Um, and then that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of looking into what happens in life after death. Is there life after death? Uh, and then eventually um, I was doing a lot of like research on YouTube and just looking at videos of people talking about this stuff. And then eventually I came across um, this online event, which was, um, you know, to do with people who can communicate with spirits. And it was like a, it was a conference. So, you know, it was professionals talking about this stuff. And it just amazed me at the level of, um, you know, the level to which they were able to describe these things and these beings that they were able to communicate with. And normally I would kind of just disregard that and not really and kind of just think, oh, that's complete BS. You know, I don't believe in any of that. Um, but obviously I kind of didn't have a chance. I had to, I had to find out what happens. And, um, and yeah, just from the way these people were talking about their experiences of their work, because they were actually doing this for a living. Um, and it was really fascinating to me. And then I, one of the, one of the people who was presenting one of the um, kind of lecturers um, really resonated with me. And I found out who they were. I contacted them. And next thing I know, I went down to see them to do like a one-to-one -one session. And that was, that was pretty much my opening of the door into Pandora's box. And then the whole journey started from there. And yeah, that was kind of how it all started for me. <laughs> Amazing. Like, I, I, I love hearing everybody's awakening story. You know, it, it's so inspiring and uh, it's so heartwarming, especially to the people that, you know, have been there, have experienced it. Um, there, there are millions of people around the world that are going through the same thing, right? It's not just a handf handful of people. This is really and truly awaken, an awakening for the whole entire human species. But we are just at the uh, uh, precipice where we you know we're like, this is the beginning. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's. it's so it's so so uh, so so quenching to hear everybody's uh you know uh experience um and journey who's that that we got down there we have Graciela. she started a community for empath and so i just thought it should be perfect and she also is she does has a book club too so i thought it would be fantastic she she was in our space last week and we were waiting so um, but, you know, I oh, want okay. to also um, read Jesse's um, bio. I was That's what I was trying to tweet out. But can we read her bio real quick? Because I think it's really important how. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So Desi Kadra is a documentary filmmaker who combines films with spirituality as a way to integrate higher wisdom into a modern day society. Her first short documentary, uh, Fighting for the Wild, based in Peru, won two awards for Best Educational Documentary and was screened at a number of international film festivals. Having studied with Natalia and Terry for a number of years and witnessed the healing power of the work, her goal and the project is to awaken and inspire others to have the courage to pursue their true gifts and understand their uniqueness. And also, you know, this whole film was based on a book. Am I correct? Because because the synopsis says it's based on the book Soul Rescuers by Natalia and Terry o O'Sullivan, renowned UK healers sought out for their work in soul and ancestral healing. This documentary takes us through their personal journeys and revelations of over 40 years of communicating with the afterlife, tackling the most prevailing questions of all time. What happens when we die? The Soul Rescuers lifts the lid on 
the truth behind the myth to review a world that we never thought was possible. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for reading it out, by the way. Um, that's, yeah, so the documentary is based on the book uh, of Natalia and Terry, who are the main characters in the documentary. Um, and basically, yeah, so rescuers is kind of <clears throat> a term that they, I guess, <clears throat> they coined with their work that they've been doing. And it's pretty much what it says on the on the front, you know, it's about, um, they were both, <clears throat> excuse me, they were both born with abilities, um, able to communicate with spirits. They've been able to see spirits since they were, since they were children, so, since they were young. So, um, you know, it, it all kind of started off for them and it started for pretty much all people who go into this, into this field as being someone who is very sensitive to energies. And that's kind of normally how it starts. Uh, you know, you're very sensitive to energies, to the energies around you, to the energies from people who are, you know, close to you or, or just people who you meet in general. And that's how the whole thing starts to develop. Um, but, you know, the reason why we kind of thought it's really important to create this documentary is because a lot of sensitive people, a lot of empaths, what you also call, yeah, empath sensitive people, um, they don't realize that this is what's going on with them. And they kind of, a lot of people tend to think, you know, there's something wrong with me. I'm, why am I so different? Why am I so weird? And they don't understand that actually um, it's something they need to kind of develop. It's like a muscle that they need to develop the whole empathic abilities and the sensitive uh, abilities. It's something that has to be developed. And um, <clears throat> that can really, yeah, if you don't understand that and you don't develop it, you don't really use it to its best ability, it can really, um, it can get you stuck because people try to kind of suppress it and deny it. And I'm sure we all know that when you do that, it just comes back later on, even if you try to, no matter how much you try to do that. So yeah, <clears throat> it's kind of about that, basically the whole documentary and the project. And I noticed you did something in Peru, like, you know what really um, gave me such, such a spiritual awakening was the Celestine prophecy. Has anyone heard? I mean, because you know it's based in Peru, yeah. right? right? And they have a workshop and everything, a workbook. Yeah, that's that's an amazing book. I've actually I read it like I think ten years ago. But yeah, it's very much kind of to do with that very similar topic in terms of the energy, how everything works in terms of energies, and how we can uh, draw from each other's energies. Sometimes in not so much of a good negative, it can be in a negative way if you're not really. Um, trained or careful with what you're doing and how you do any of these things so yeah there's definitely a process that you have to go through to learn how to really use those abilities and and obviously yeah it's it's good because then you can really make the most out of your own uh gifts that you came here with and and empaths i believe are very gifted with those things it's just something they have to kind of really hone in and and really try to discover for themselves so yeah and i'm sure graciela will probably know a lot about that as well so <laughs> um ab about the celestine prophecy that was the one of the first books that uh, i was referred to um it might have been september of 2011 so it was my first month you know um dealing with the spiritual awakening and what i was going through and learning as much as i can um and i read the Cel the celestine prophecy and then, um, have you guys read the Twelfth uh, Insight, the second Celestine Prophecy? No, I actually got the book, and then I ended up giving it to someone else. Um, I discovered this book, believe it or not, back in, see, I moved down to South Florida in 1996. I, someone gave, told me about this book, and I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I had a, I had a lot of well-to-do friends so one of my friends like here where do you want to go we'll meet up and have you know since you have nothing going on i'm like well let me go ahead i, I don't know i've never been to san francisco so he flew me out to san francisco but on the way there i like picked up this book and it was just it was like in the airport i just picked that up and i bought it and and i read it and i couldn't put it down and you know how long a flight that is from from miami to all the way to um san francisco and I just like had this awakening, like, wow, you know, um, I should be more aware who I speak to, who I talk to, uh, you know, if someone's is triggering me or making me upset, maybe because really, you know, because the Celestian prophecy, they talk about the, you meet people who are takers, you meet people who are givers, you know, and then they're raised by, it's by their childhood, 
like how they, they were treated as a child that makes a difference. So I just find that so incredible that um, a book like that, and that's changed the course of my life, I feel. I, I went from being um, not, you know, being uh, the, uh, you know, because I always felt like I was going through some bad times, like really, really bad times. And I always felt like, and then I moved down here with A, not having a job, I was literally, literally homeless. Actually, I had a I had a boyfriend slash fiance that was like, I don't know, he cheated on me, so I didn't I didn't even know what happened. But he's so I ended up like moving out in a in a taxi cab. I mean, literally. And so when I went away to San Francisco, reading this book, coming back, and I got stuck in San Francisco, and usually I would freak out. And I was kind of like, you know, maybe it was meant for me to take this trip. It was meant for me to go and talk to my friend who was like, you know, just so chill and so laid back about life and everything. And I just felt that maybe because he had so much, you know, but he kind of like gave me a little insight in how he got there. But at the end of the day, I felt like, oh, instead of like focusing on what I don't have or how sadness is about, how what like, oh my God, I'm a victim. This person did this to me or that person did this to me. I just kind of like felt like, you know, I should have empathy, practice empathy. And, and I think that's when I started learning about being, you know, being, have an empathic ability because you got to realize, you know, when you block out those, because, you know, you were always told, oh, that's crazy. Crazy people only do that. You need to get on, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how many people have been put on uh, medication because they feel like they're 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 losing their mind, you know. So um, I feel like this book changed my life. Like like I give this book to every single person I meet, and it's from per uh, the whole story is from Peru, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think yeah. it's so important to to kind of become aware of these things. I'll be interested to hear Graciela's uh, story and how she kind of came upon this path because yeah, she leads the whole empath group. So. Uh, would love to know more about that. Yes. Absolutely. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm outside because the toddler is awake. And so it's his world and I just live in it. Um, so I'm watching him as he plays around. Um, so empath, how, where, where do I start? I was, you know how Pocahontas, the song says, you know, everything has a spirit, right? The, what you, everything. And so I grew up in that generation and i remember watching pocahontas when i was like four or five years old and i was like yes yes like i knew it right and so uh spiritual connection and spiritual awareness has always been so on point even though it was never developed so you know totally relate to the you're too loud you're too weird you're too obnoxious you're too this you're too that uh very energetically sensitive to people, bullies, uh, just negative energy in general, abuse, all of the negative aspects of our existence, right? And then in all honesty, um, spiritual awakening as a child was pretty much just very natural. Like I always knew who I was and whose I was, right? In terms of spirit, but with all the negativity and, and all of the uh, toxicity, I kind of just, I didn't shun it. I don't wanna say that I specifically said, I don't want these gifts. Like it wasn't like that. It was more of a, I have no idea. I guess I'm just weird like that, right? Like a denial of it, right? Um, I, I have no clue what's going on. But then three years ago when my child was born, that was a second awakening for me. I remember looking at him and it was so, like spirit was so loud. This is it. This is it. You need to figure out. You need to create boundaries. You need to develop. You need to expand. You need to evolve, level up. It was all just so, so clear that I just dove right into it. And it's been three years of never ending you know, constant developing. I became a coach. I chose empaths as the people that I want to help. I call it the journey into soul alignment. Who are you? What are your gifts? And how can I assist you to develop, to level up, to stand in your power, right? And uh, it's been life-changing. My child is definitely an empath. I see it every single day. I have videos of him just downloading and I'm like, what did spirit say to you just now? And he can't speak yet because he's bilingual. You're going to see him running around maybe. Um, so he's three and we still cannot have a conversation, but I'll never forget that day. 
I recorded like 40 seconds of him just like this. Just, I'm like, what is going on? I'm just going to stay here and catch it with my phone. And I remember asking him, what did spirit say to you just now? And he came over and he hugged me with a smile in his face. And it was so beautiful. And, you know, he is very loud and he is very sensitive, right? And it's just, it's, we have quite the mission here to provide a space where people can just be themselves this is what my community is about and after a year of figuring out like you know all these twitter communities how can i have one and and who am i going to serve and accommodate and a few weeks ago we held a space i do a weekly space it's two hours long and it's lots of education lots of coaching and whatnot and all of a sudden I realized every single person in the room was an empath. They all would identify as empath. And I'm like, oh, this is it, this is it, everyone. And I just went ahead and I opened it and launched it last week. And it's just beautiful. You know, it's it, it needs to gain traction, right? Like I want other people to post in it and to feel safe to ask questions and reach out for help. Uh, and that takes time. I'm aware of it. I've been creating content for over 10 years, so I know the the gist of the process. But it's wonderful to just have a place where we can all be ourselves without being weirdos or without being woo-woo or without being, you know, <laughs> witches and stuff. <laughs> like we're just, we're just extra sensory sensitive and it's a beautiful thing to be so aware and so in tune and it's so powerful, but at the same time, it can be so negative. So I, I love to just be in this space where I can help people figure that out and guide them along the way so that they can thrive because a lot of us are just surviving and, and above water with negativity and stigma and family that don't get us at all, right? Um, and in my family, the empaths, were on the side of my dad and he's already gone. And my grandfather who was at schizophrenic is already gone. And it's like, I have no one that can relate that I can speak to that's alive because my dad is very present. Let me just throw that out there. And so, yeah, I'm just very happy to be here and to hear about your project. Congratulations on your documentary and, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. That was amazing to hear your um, your experience. Yeah, because I think a lot of people can relate. And I'm sure, like you said, oh, empaths, they kind of feel like they're the black sheep of the family almost. You know, you can't relate to anyone. You feel a little bit strange. You feel like you don't really, no one from your family is really like you. But actually, one of the things that, um, and also we talk about in the documentary is that normally this, this, these Qual these um, abilities and talents and gifts they do travel from the family line so normally even if you can't see it in your immediate family uh, like your mom your dad stuff like that you will see it later down down the line if you go down you know two three four generations you you find that there was someone that was kind of spiritual that was a healer or something like that and you've kind of inherited those energies so it does it, it is passed down so yeah definitely Yes, for sure. And I'll, I'll add something if I may really quick. Yes, it's a truck. Um, I'll add something really quick. I A lot became very clear and this is very interesting. So I'm bringing it up. I would love to hear your insight on this. Um, a lot became very clear when I married my husband, who is one fourth Cherokee Native American. Oh, wow. And we joined together in matrimony which can be a simple ceremony that anybody can perform and all of a sudden it was like whoa <laughs> like what is going on um with the healing aspect of it and the shamanism like my interest in just learning all those things were a little bit more i just became kind of obsessed with it mm -hmm. in a way that i couldn't explain like i've never been interested in shamanism and in learning about you know, empath healing like I am now. And we've been together for eight years and none of it happened until we got married just two years ago. And so that was fascinating as well. The generational aspect of energy and it's just so beautiful and magical. I just love it. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And it's really fascinating when you actually start getting into this work and you realize um, how much support we do actually have on the other side from all of our ancestors, you know, uh, our ancestors are kind of all around us, especially during 
important um yeah uh, situation you know uh, important phases like getting married or having a baby or you know even someone passing away the ancestors are always there on the other side kind of waiting you know to receive that person or, or sending the new child you know into the world so it's really fascinating how it works we have so much more support than we actually think um so yeah that's another plus kind of why people should even get into it because you have so much support and they you know you have all these wise ancestors that have lived through so many things and they could give you a lot of advice only if we were open enough to actually open the doors to that and yeah yeah and to understand that there's nothing scary about it and i think this is where the stigma comes from yeah, um sure. there's no there's no darkness to it. It's mm -hmm. only a cult because you haven't dipped your toes in it, right? Uh, it's, um, yeah. I, I teach a lot about the moon mm -hmm. and what I like to, how I like to resume it or summarize it is the dark side of the moon is still the same moon. It is just as powerful. And just because we cannot see it, you know, on the new moon, doesn't mean it's not there. And so it's just, there's a lot there and and it's really a privilege to be on this journey uh like you bringing awareness to it and doing your part and i was a film major as well and a screenwriter major so i'm so happy to make your acquaintance and just yeah. happy to be here thank you amazing yeah there's obviously a reason why we were put together today so thanks to uh gino and tonya <laughs> she crypto also but i want to gina where were you but like you were able to discover um the soul rescue i mean you i think i see you were sitting in a space am i correct no uh it wasn't a space i think uh, i think i was just surfing looking for um looking for guests on um on uh twitter and synchronistically yeah. serendipitously <laughs> I think I spotted you first and I emailed you. I think I sent you a message. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how it started. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I immediately recognized yeah. the star, star seed name and I thought, hmm, interesting star seed in film. <laughs> That's a combination that I like. <laughs> so, yeah. For sure. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's branded in everything I do. Um, mm. The I, I learned about. Um, the whole uh, star seed um, and the meaning from Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of Dolores Cannon? Yeah, I, she I passed have. away. She's big. In yeah, the community. Um, yeah. <laughs> and she talks about the three waves of volunteers of uh, people to Earth. That was uh, the first lecture uh, lectures of her um that i listened to um back in the day and uh i mean it it just kicked so many doors down <laughs> down as far as spirituality with me um she was so great um i, I also you're from you're from england or london or where are you from again yeah, from from London. Um, yeah, I wasn't born in London, but I've lived there for most of my life. And currently, I'm in Spain. I'm in Barcelona, but I've been in London for most of my life. So yeah, more London. Another, another good friend of mine, and she she taught me a lot. We were actually going to do a documentary film about reincarnation and reincarnation phenomena um, that we've experienced in our life. Her name is Elena Adams. Okay. She went by Elena, Elena, Elaine Ra, mm -hmm. um, and she, she was quite big in the uh, in the um, conscious scene over there. I don't, have you ever met her or heard of her? No, I haven't heard of her. But in like, yeah, London has so many people in the film industry, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not yeah, it's quite common not to well. It's common to also know people, but yeah, it's a lot of people from there. So I haven't, I haven't yeah. heard of one. Unfortunately, you know, she, she passed away. Um, so, but I, w I would still like to put it out. Um, there's this doctor named Dr. Ian Stevenson. He was a uh, psychology professor in Charlottesville. 
um, at the University of Virginia, and he studied uh, reincarnation and reincarnation phenomena in mm. thousands of people, like thousands. Um, and I came across his work and I discovered things about myself and then it, uh, it just blew my mind, you know, um, we, I, I'd be more comfortable talking to you about it or sharing the stuff that I have, you know, after, after the conversation, I don't, I don't really want to talk about it right now. Um, I, I really want to do this project. You should join Grassi but, uh, community. You should join again? You should join Graciela's Twitter community. Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. I will. I will definitely do that. Yes. Um, um I. I didn't. I can't get out of this to go into Twitter, but um, later on, I'll send you a link, or it's in my profile. Yeah, no share. doubt we could. I definitely join. Um, what, what was I saying? I guess. Oh yeah, Dr. Ian Stevenson. Um, whenever you guys get a chance, check out some of his work. It's it's really incredible. Um, what he discovered um, about reincarnation and this this science of it. And um, speaking of reincarnation, I believe in soul groups. I I believe. Um, you know how people say they come across people that they've felt that they've known forever, they feel familiar, even if you've only talked to them for a minute or two, just something about that person that feel, feels familiar. It's because it is, you know, it's like um, soul groups are basically groups of souls that have traveled together for eons, you know, just, just traveling together, learning together. Um, and um, I think a lot of people are getting in touch with their soul groups at the at at this point in time. Um, that Dolores Cannon, she she also taught me about soul groups. I think I forget which lecture it was in. I think it might have been the three waves of volunteers, but ah, it was so good. It was so awesome. Amazing, yeah. I've heard, yeah, there's so many soul groups. It's it's all kind of very, very connected, especially now. And uh, yeah, like Graciela said, it's not just about love and things like that. It's, yeah, it's kind of, I think the way I understand it, soul groups or soul mates, you know, kind of from the same group about kind of helping each other on their journey here. So that's why when you, and because we come from the same soul group, you have similar frequencies. So when you meet someone from your same, from the same soul group as you, you know, a soul mate, that's why you feel this instant kind of attraction. You know, it doesn't have to be romantic. It can just be like a friendship or something. But that's why you feel that, um, yeah, attraction to them is because you have the same frequencies. And uh, a lot of the times they say we kind of pre, we uh, decide before we come in into this physical reality that we are going to meet to kind of further each other's uh, growth on this journey. So it's quite interesting. Definitely worth learning about soul groups, I think. So. Really interesting and topic. here we are here we together. are together <laughs> yes it's yes. amazing it's like the sister from another mister right and the brother from another mother why yeah. do we feel like that about each other mm -hmm. uh what is it about our humanity that just really resonates at a soul level and and it's it's amazing i didn't really ever investigate into twin flames as a topic until my child was born as well, because he was born the day after me. I spent my birthday in labor. And once I realized he was a highly sensitive, you know, empath, I'm like, he's like my mirror. This kid is my mirror, my mini me. And, and he's a boy and I'm a girl. So there's, it's just so beautiful. And we think about twin flames as well. Well, not we, but you know, society at large, it's like, oh, my lover is my twin flame and I just love him so much. And we, we vibe so well and we're thriving as a, as a couple, but it's like, my child is my twin flame. He couldn't be any less than me. Like he is so, so much like me in every level. And um, I have no doubt that at the soul level, it is my mission to 
figure all this out for myself so I can teach him and guide him and help him be the best empath superhero he can be. So it's, it's a beautiful journey for sure. And it's wonderful to have a safe space to share it. So thank you. What a great birthday present you got. I know that I can get cake or balloons, but I got a child. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's identical to me and my grandmother's um, relationship. Uh, she, uh, unfortunately, she um, has crossed over, but I'm born on the no on November sixth. Um, she was born on November seventh. You know, we were both Scorpios, and we were so much alike. It's crazy. Um, so that 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 just reminds me of my me and my grandmother's um relationship yeah you know i i, I really uh, believe that because my little niece who's born on the same birthday she is so freaking cute i'm just watching her like make clothes she goes to the thrift store and buys clothes puts it on the app tells me what the app is does all these different social media thing and she was she started doing this when she was like 10 11 She's like in her, she's in like, I think she's 13, 14. I just lost count. I just like, just remember how cute this little girl is. And she was just such a, always coming with new ideas. And then, and, and then when she talks about it, I'm sitting going, oh my God, this is like a mini me when I was a little kid. <laughs> so I, I really believe in that. I really believe that, um, oh, look how beautiful he is. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> awesome. Up, she said, man? hello. <laughs> so cute. So cute. I also want to make sure that you played the trailer also, um, but we could, we should go over a little bit, right? Cause we didn't, uh, we just kind of like started late. I'll edit everything. So. Yeah, we're only at a uh, 48 minutes. So we're able to stream, stream the uh, yeah, you can trailer on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All I do is share the screen from their from I'm 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 on their website. So, but we should also talk about the NFT project. <laughs> I'm I'm really curious about yeah, that. that. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, do you want me to, to say something about it now? Yeah. Um, yeah. So with the NFT, yeah. So so basically, uh, we're kind of we are we're towards the end of the documentary, but we just um, need a little bit more funds to finish the post-production um i've shot it's already shot and we're editing it um but yeah we're just needing a bit more funds to kind of raise to finish it completely so yeah i thought the nfts would be a great way to do that i've heard quite a few uh filmmakers have been you know using nfts to fundraise the rest of their films and it's worked out pretty well so i thought it's it's a good time probably to get into this community right now as it seems to be booming uh so yeah think it's a good way to start yeah are you doing any crowdfunding also um in real life to go with your nft project uh yeah so we're actually going to do an online uh, virtual event on the first of november which is uh, all souls day so we're going to have um for anyone who's interested and you know they can check out uh, all the information will be on the website which is uh, the soul rescuers series.com and then all my uh, social media networks you know channels like the soul rescuers is on instagram on twitter the same name um we're gonna do a screening on the first of november uh like a short you know for part of the film and a q a with myself and the characters so yeah we're gonna do a kind of a um, donation based fundraising then and uh, also along with the nfts we're gonna do that separately so yeah all together we're hoping to raise the overall amount that we need so yeah first of november is going to be the first partial screening of the film um so yeah looking forward to that <laughs> have you thought about doing anything in real life like maybe do an auction for dinner with the filmmaker and the author and oh know? yeah yeah, we, yeah we're gonna have those within the actual um so we're gonna be doing you know the nfts and patron kind of type of fundraising so for anyone who purchases any one of those uh you know levels uh, they'll be able to uh, uh get uh, you know different types of uh bonuses basically yes yeah. so uh, some will have access to the you know to the screening when it comes out uh you can also have access to um scripts and anything like that that we've kind of put together to prepare for the film uh q a's with myself and the characters also dinners will be available so yeah uh interviews uh, any of those things yeah will be will be on there for sure 
So yeah, there's lo there'll be loads of different ways for them for people to connect and to learn more about. And we'll also be doing um, online classes and workshops as well. So for anyone who wants to really experience the true magic, then those are probably going to be the best ones to join. So yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Tangi, you want to go ahead and play that trailer? I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay. And... The interest in psychic and spiritual things started when I was very young. Always had a feeling that there was something out there. There's always one family member that seems to be the spoke person between the dead and the living. And I was born to have that relationship. When you just are born with something, you just think that that's how it is. You don't really question it. I had these psychic visions. I had this intuition. I could see and I could feel the energy around me. My interest is for oversensitive people to understand that they are different. They can be brave enough to take that step where they can make a difference always felt that I had to be. It's a very interesting topic about what is my sole purpose, why am I here? The spiritualist tradition opened in my eyes to recognize that there were things that went on in the afterlife that I would not possibly believe. Because when you die and you pass out of the physical body, you're moving into the astral dimensions. I remember really, really vividly the spirit that I could actually see. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience. And that's just completely over my eyes that I've absolutely Sometimes the dead, they also need to tell their stories. In Western culture, particularly more recently, we've moved further and more, further away from a place where we could restore our spiritual connection. So because we don't talk about it, and the church doesn't talk about it, there is absolutely, in this Western society, no preparation. We don't need to see or touch something in order to actually accept it. It's very difficult for lay people to understand about spirituality. You are the soul rescuer in that family. You are here with a legacy to heal, to make well, to celebrate, to honor, to uplift. And the more you explore inside yourself, the more you will uncover this gold mine of information, this gold mine of intelligence which cannot really be taught because you feel it from the inside. It's fed you from your soul. Oh man, how dope is that? I know that music wow. was so good. Oh my gosh, everything, oh my everything. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, hopefully that's, it'll be finished by the end of this year <laughs> so we can all get to watch it. But yeah, definitely a lot of gems in there, a lot, a lot to learn. And we actually, um, because we have so much footage, uh, we're going to create so, uh, like a mini series from the rest of the footage because, yeah, we have a lot that we shot. And um, so it's going to be the main documentary. And then the series is going to be a lot more educational. So it's going to be for people who really, really want to learn more about this stuff and kind of want to, um, yeah, learn about it, practice it for themselves and really get into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, the series is going to be for that. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that, that that is definitely awesome. Like, um, well, I'm I'm just blown away. <laughs> you know, like, um, uh, when you, <laughs> I'm at a loss of I'm at a loss of words, but that's a good thing. Um, shout out to you, man. Thank shout you out so to you for making such an amazing, amazing project. Um. You deserve all your accolades and everything that's coming to you. Um, 
I'm excited. You are de you are definitely a messenger, and uh, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for doing this and putting us all together. <laughs> yeah, no I mean, doubt, no doubt. Talk about bridging. So you're crypto. the bridge right now. Go ahead. I didn't know if she crypto wanted to um, add, ask any questions. She's she's in the DM with us. We're in the private message, but I didn't know if she wanted to add to anything. But um, go ahead, Graciela. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm blown away too. And everybody that you interviewed, it just feels like so powerful and heartfelt as well, because our journeys are so personal and at the same time, so powerful. And there's a flight going above. I don't know if you can hear it, but, um, and I just want to commend you for you being the bridge in this instance, you know, to bring us to this I cannot wait to watch it. And I'll get back to you about interviewing you before November 1st so that we can bring awareness to that date, but it'll be amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and it's all about community. It's all about community, I, I feel, you know, and uh, there's so many different communities that we can all connect together. It's just a, an important thing. And, you know, the best part about this is we get to watch you grow. Um, I, I really, you know, we met, so many different filmmakers and different things to do with Web3 and, and especially Film3 um, with Gino and She Crypto. We've, we've, seen, we've seen mostly finished work or beginning of our, like a contest like we just did with Sherry uh, a couple of weeks ago. But just to be able to watch you, you already finished yours already and now you just need the final m amount of yeah. money. And you're utilizing um, Film3 for this. And for us to be here, to be able to watch you and just, you know, and then whatever we can do and to celebrate you, that's fantastic. And, and, and the, um, you know, the trailer is incredible. I just like, I can't wait to see the whole movie. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, the, the main thing is that we want to um, just bring all of these people together, the empaths, the sensitives to kind of just build this community and hopefully, yeah, the, uh, one of our main objectives and goals with the film is to bring, yeah, bring empaths together and kind of, uh, encourage them to to um, pursue their gifts, to pursue their abilities, to realize why they're here. Because a lot of people right now are lost. You know, a lot of people are not quite sure why they're here, what their purpose is. A lot of people are getting lost in different, um, just different fields that are probably not the best for them. And I really hope whoever comes across this film, this project, uh, it kind of just sparks their their soul, you know, it kind of just makes them, rem it reminds them of who they are and why they're here. And that's kind of the main objective with the film. So yeah, the more the merrier. <laughs> well, I told oh, you, it's amazing. This is the quickest hour we've ever done. So this is amazing and I understand. So congratulations, it looks amazing. Can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. Well, what I'd like to do at this um, time of the, uh, our interviews uh, every week is uh, grant our guest with the Starseed Hall of Fame golden ticket. Um, we got one of those for you. I'm going to be getting that to you after our conversation is over. But like I said to you, um, kudos to you. I appreciate you. And everything you're doing, um, you you were meant to do this, and uh, you know, um, a lot of people say sky's the limit, but I, there's no limit to where you are going. Keep keep pushing, and um, I see much abundance in your future. Thank you so much. I really, really hope so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all the abundance that we need. But yeah, thank you so much, Gino. Thank you so much for um, yeah for bringing me on. I uh, really, really appreciate it. Actually, this is the first time I've spoken about it um, pretty much this year, yeah, because it's been going on for a couple of years now and we've been doing back and forth, but this is the first proper time. So thank you so much for having me on. And thank you, Tonya, so much for also organizing it. I really appreciate it. And Graciela, yeah, we definitely need to keep in touch because what you're doing is amazing. So we need to <laughs> stay in touch for sure. So Thank can you, you tell so us, um, our listeners how to get a hold of you before we let you go? 
Uh, yes, so on Twitter uh, and also on Instagram and all the social media, my uh, the name is the same. It's The Soul Rescuers. Uh, and the website is called the soul rescuer series.com. So on any of these, they can reach me and, um, they can check out the NFT pages on the website. Also, uh, we're going to be launching in the next week or so. So yeah, we're a little bit behind on that, but yeah, in the next week we'll launch the NFTs. And then, uh, if they sign up to my newsletter, to the newsletter on the website, they'll be able to get all the, um, all the updates on our screening for the 1st of November. So that's, um, yeah, that's all set yeah perfect thank you thank, thank you. you everybody and Graciela thank you for being awesome. here absolutely thank you for having me I'm looking forward to many more conversations it's going to be great thank you mm -hmm. much love to all you guys um thank you guys for coming out we'll be back, we'll be back at 8 p.m. We'll be back at 8 yep, p.m. We'll tonight. Yep, we'll be right? back. Yep, we'll be back at 8 p.m. tonight. Um, this is our first double header, <laughs> um, but you know we're getting it done. So check in with us tonight for um, who, who's the guest tonight? Uh, Kino App. They're they're um, they fun film. So you never know. I, I, we can send you the information you want to look. Well, it's going to be live streamed also, so um, we can send you the in information. Um, if you, if anybody wants to check it out, but yeah, let's think I, I met them. They, they, they reached out to me and I reached out to them and I just thought it was a really cool, um, because, you know, I talk about for our project, it's like, we do all things film three. That's how I to explain it to people. I don't know how you explain it, um, Gino, but I was like, yeah, <laughs> we focus on all things film three. Um, any platform, any filmmakers, or get love, or even if they're not into Film Three yet, but they want to get into, we're the per perfect um, place to go first. And then between um, Gino and She Crypto, because they're more into it, I'm more like the producer in. But um, I think that's the like the beginning for a lot of people. So it's exciting to be able to feature a lot of new projects, new developers. Gosh, we, I, I can go down the list of all the different people we uh, have featured, right? Gino and She Crypto. And she crypto is in yeah. a lot of, of women film three projects too. So she's always bringing us some new people also. Indeed. It's, it's exciting time to be an artist for sure. Um, you know, it's a renaissance. So yeah, you should tap in. It definitely is artistically and spiritually. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. That See you guys later tonight. It was nice meeting everybody. You too. Peace Thanks out, so everybody. Take care. Bye.